she's homeschool. It's got fun and games, like countdown, and some modern crafts. Science, nature, and lots of numeracy. Maths and art and literacy. Cooking, music, geography. Mr. Bletcher's homeschool. Good morning! No, don't do that with the mic, Carlos. That's not a way to introduce the show, is it? Right, good morning, everyone. Welcome to Thursday of week four of Mr. Bletcher Homeschool. Nearly done four weeks, wow. Well done for, for uh, working hard and thank you for joining us. Today, we have a huge episode. We have lots of activities. We've got three different styles of maths activity. We've got reading and we've got Mrs. Lunch. I mean, Mrs. Lynch. Mrs. Lynch is gonna be here with a arts and crafts activity for all you readers out there, which is all of you, because I know you're all fantastic at reading. So, let's get on with the show. Oh, actually, no. Before we move on to the other aspects, one thing, two things I need to tell you. Tomorrow, we have two huge announcements, massive announcements. Don't worry, they're really positive. Um, and I'm really looking forward to giving you those two bits of news. So make sure you're tuning in tomorrow. Now, moving on. We're starting with a brain teaser and moving on to other aspects of maths. Let's go. So here's our addition problem. We have 4.5 plus 9.07. So we start from right to left. Here would be a zero because there's nothing there. So you imagine that 4.5 is the same, well it is the same as 4.50. So zero add seven equals seven. Five add zero equals five. Nine plus four makes 13. However, my answer is not 1,357 because I need to remember to put the decimal point in there. So my final answer is 13.57. So here we have 2.89 plus 3.6. So again, we start from the right, moving left. Nine plus zero equals nine. 8 plus 6 is 14, so the 4 is there, we carry the 1 over. 2 plus 3 is 5, add the 1 is 6. Remember the decimal point, so our final answer is 6.49. So here we have our addition problem of 1.09 plus 6.78. So let's start from the right, going left. Nine plus eight is 17. So seven, carry the one over. Zero plus seven is seven, and the one is eight. One add the six is seven. Remember the decimal point. So our final answer is 7.87. and welcome to Pokemon Go question of the day where we ask you a maths question based on our experience of Pokemon Go. So today we're looking around and we've discovered this Pokemon here. The name, let's check, Mistrevus. Mistrevus. So we have Mistrevus. Let's try and catch it hopefully in one go. Curveball, great. Shakes once, twice, got it. Brilliant. So our maths question today will all be about Mistrevus. So today's question is, what is the combined CP of these two Pokemon? 
If you've got the answer, remember to comment it below. See if you can be our first viewer to get the answer correct. And remember, check back later for another Pokemon Go question of the day. Mistrevious likes to scare people by making a dreadful wailing sound. The red spheres around its neck seem to soak up the fear so the Pokemon can use it for food. Word of the day. Quell. What is the definition? Quell is a verb. To quell means to stop or quiet something. Can you use the word in a sentence? Quell the enemy's advance, commanded the sergeant. So, um, moving on to the explorer, we're going to read the rest of the chapter. Then what I'd like you to do is summarise the this part of the chapter that I'm reading. Remember, summaries give us the main information, but it is brief. So I want your summary to be three sentences. Not one, not two, not four, not five, not six, not 108. Three sentences. So think of the three main points from the rest of the chapter that I'm about to read. Lila heaped shredded leaves and dried grass in a pile. You do it over that, she said, so the spark has something to catch. Con struck the back of the watch against the stone. Fred winced. She overshot and dug the flint into her own skin. She said nothing and tried again. She bit down on her tongue, concentrating. Her eyebrows furrowed so deeply they nudged against her eyelashes, striking and striking until her fingers were raw. Suddenly, flint and steel let off a tiny spark. Con was so stunned she fumbled the flint. Again, shrieked Max. Again, again. The spark came again, a brief flare into the world that vanished as it came. It needs to be lower over the kindling, said Lila. Con struck again and again. The spark caught against the blade of grass, which caught against another. Fred's heart leapt and he dropped to his stomach and blew on the scrap of fire. Terrified he would blow it right out, the flame faltered. No, 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 don't die, said Con. Lila added a handful of dry moss. Fred blew again. The fire seemed to breathe in and then exhaled a cough of flames. Max whooped. Lila held out a sheaf of twigs. The fire caught at them, made five burning fingers, ate them whole. It belched upwards. More, said Max. He was dancing in a tight circle, slapping at his ribs. Feed it more. Fred added a handful of dry, of bone dry leaves and then another and another. The fire made a noise like an idea being born, a crackle that sounded like hope and sent up a column of flames. They all rocked back on their ankles, grinning at each other. We could sleep in shifts, said Con, to make sure it doesn't go out. She looked at the fire with proprietorial pride. We made that by ourselves. Fred put the watch quietly in his, back, in his pocket. It was scratched now and deeply dented, but inside his pocket he clutched it so tightly it dug a circular bruise into his palm. It's the most beautiful fire I've ever seen, said Lila. Yes, by, said Con, by far. Max bit lightly at Lila's arm. Can we eat now? I'm so hungry I might die. Fred scrabbled in the dust with his nails until he found a flat stone and balanced it, wobbling dangerously on four green wood sticks over the centre of the flames. Lila divided the grub paste into four bowls and spread them on the stone. Eventually, the pancakes began to bubble. Lila poked them. They're getting harder, she said. And they smell like a shoe, said Con. That probably means they're done. One of the trees near the dent had vast fleshy leaves, as big as serving dishes. Fred pulled four of them down and dropped a grub pancake onto each one. They were hot to the touch and gooey. They're probably best while they're so hot you can't taste them, said Fred. He bit off half the pancake, trying not to chew much. It tasted disconcertingly animal. It was, he thought, like eating porridge mixed with fingernail grime. But it was better, wildly, infinitely better, than nothing. Con nibbled the corner of hers. She grimaced, but she didn't spit it out. To be honest, it's not that much worse than school dinners, she said, and she smiled half a smile. Max kept his food scrunched in his fist, guarding it from the others. I don't like sharing, he said. His pancake oozed out from between his fingers. The clearing was growing darker every minute. Con stood. I'm going to go and use the, 
she hesitated and coloured. The lavatory. So don't come over there or look around or I'll punch you. She paused. Please. We could decide on a place, said Fred, quite far off. And then we could mark a path and nobody would get lost. They got up and all four of them, standing close together in the gathering dark, and began looking for a suitable large tree far enough from the fire, but not far enough away to risk getting lost. This one's big, said Fred. And this one, said Con. The trees were immense, stretching at least as high as a church. We could make that one the boys' toilet and this one for the girls, said Con. Lila's smile, Lila's smile was sudden and enormous. It showed that one of her teeth was wonky and she had a dimple in her cheek. We could call it the Lavo Tree. It wasn't terribly funny, but once Fred started laughing, he couldn't stop. Con choked and had to bite her fist. Max's laughter sent a ribbon of snot flying out across the glade. They laughed loudly enough to scare the birds and to make the distant monkeys roar angrily from their night perches in the trees. Done. That chapter's over. Now, we're moving on to a chapter called The Raft. But, like I said before, time for you to summarise what were the main three points, main three things that happened in that paragraph. I hope you're all keeping well um, and safe and looking after each other. Today's art lesson we're going to do bookmarks and I thought this was a nice idea because I know that you'll be reading a lot at home and what happens is when you finish your page they're easy just to slip on and then close your book and then that's your page saved. Um, there's lots of different designs we can do so I've got a few here which I've chosen so if you keep watching I'll show you how to make them. Right, so what we need to start with is paper. You can have coloured paper, scissors, glow stick and pens. Okay, to start we're going to need an A4 sheet of paper. To get a perfect square you have to go from corner to corner and line it up. Not like me, that's it, like that. Fold a crease. Okay, when you've got that crease and what you can do is turn it over and where this point is, fold it back so you can see the line behind. Alright, so you end up with that. And then this bit, all you have to do is just cut it off. Alright, I'm not going to cut it. I'm going to... It's best if you use scissors, not like me. Alright, so we've got that. Once you've done that, okay, fold it back over to the points, we end up with a triangle. This point and this point, you need to match them up. All right, it's important that you match them as close as you can, because when you line this bit up, there's not got to be a gap. All right, so you line it up as close as you possibly can. All right, so it looks like that. Then what happens, this bit, this fold a bit, you flip this back, you fold this back like that, and you fold these over. Instead of leaving them down the bottom, you have to put them inside. Put them inside like that. Okay, so that's one done. Flip this one down, make sure it lines up. And then you fold that one inside. And then you end up with something like that. When you're making the ears or the feet, my advice is to fold the paper in half, cut out one ear. And what will happen is you'll end up with two. Same with the feet. Alright, so cut out one foot. Okay, that bit, these are the 
feet and then the feet go inside Next we need a tail, so look at your tail, um, it's quite a zigzaggy one to be fair, so it doesn't matter how it looks, you do it how you feel, it's like a kind of light and stripe, I think. Mine looks like that, and all you do is a bit of glue on that. Then what you need is a marker, so put a bit of a tint on his ears, a bit of a line, just to define it, and his feet, and all that, and you want two eyes, so his eyes, either side, and keep circling until you end up with a tiny white Yellow, but you know what I mean. Tiny bit. It's like the whites of his eyes. Alright, then he needs his nose. His mouth. Okay, next he wants his little red cheeks. bookmark okay quite simple okay I'll quickly show you the minion one all right because that's quite a good one I've cut the pieces out to start with just to make it easier so first of all I cut out a little square what fits on the bottom so I'll glue that first glue stick that on it stick that onto card, like so, alright, made him a little belt, alright, so the belt, that sticks on there, don't worry about it overlapping at the edges, because we can cut that off after, that's his other belt, that fits, alright, then what you need to do with that, Cut that bit off, follow it all the way around to where the triangle ends. Same with this side. Alright, you've got that. I made this eye earlier so it didn't take too long. Alright, so what best thing to do with that is glue that one on. Done a little pocket. That's your main room one. I hope you enjoyed making those. Um, it'd be nice to see some on Mr. Brush's own schooling if you do get a chance to make any. Um, look after yourselves and we'll see you soon. Bye! Mr. Watchers, Mr. Watchers